My name is Stuart Klen. I'm a priest serving in the Diocese of Northern Indiana. I'm a doctoral candidate in moral theology at the University of Notre Dame, and I'm a 2017 ECF fellow. Uh, the purpose of my project is to develop a framework uh, for the ethics of lying and truth-telling in contemporary society. Um, the primary influence in my project uh, is the medieval scholastic theologian Thomas Aquinas and the account of truth that he develops in his Summa Theologiae. Uh, and while I spend um, a significant portion of my project um, trying to understand and interpret what Aquinas says about lying and truth, uh, I'm more concerned about giving Christians today a framework within which we can think about the ethics of lying and truth-telling uh, that rises above the shallow discourse that we often encounter today. One of the problems, I think, is that the, the discourse around the ethics of lying um, often begins with a set of questions centered on conundrums, such as, when might it ever be okay to lie, or are, is there a such thing as a white lie? Uh, and those are important questions, but I tend to take uh, Aquinas' lead by asking a different set of questions and thinking about uh, truth as a virtue, which means something that we possess as a character trait, and asking bigger questions like, what is truth? Um, or why do we value the truth as human beings? And what might it mean to be a truthful person? And when we begin with that set of questions, it takes us on a very different trajectory than one might find in a typical sort of Christian ethics textbook. And so that this has been the inspiration for my project. The Episcopal Church, even though it's not merely an institution, it is an institution. And that means that we have all of the trappings that come with institutions like bureaucracy and interpersonal conflict and so on. Uh, and as followers of Christ, I think that we are held to a higher standard and that we need to model for the world what it might look like for us to be a truthful community that holds one another accountable. And I think that my work can offer a small contribution to that discussion. Receiving the ECF Fellowship has uh, helped me in, in two distinct ways, I think. The first is um, simply that it's provided the resources for me to give uh, the full time and attention that my academic work needs. Uh, in other words, I haven't had to, as I have in the past, put my academic work on hold in order to find ways to support my family, uh, like especially in this crucial stage as I'm writing my dissertation. Uh, and the second way is it has kept me grounded in the Anglican and Episcopal world by um, uniting me with a, a network of fellows who are all committed to the flourishing of the Episcopal Church and to feel connected um, both to the scholars who are, are working on similar things to what I'm working on, but also to those who have a deep commitment to the church. My vision for the church um, is simple, I think, um, that we would be the kind of truthful community that points not to ourselves, uh, but, but to Christ, um, and offers the gospel as something that uh, we didn't create or that we possess uh, on our own, but that we share with the world, and I know that that's very, a very simple answer, but I think it's important, especially, especially as we um, struggle with our own problems within the church, our own divisions and concerns about growth and sustainability. I think those are all very important and that we need to continue to have discussion around those things, but we can never lose sight about what makes us a community in the first place.